Welcome to this segment of conversation with running members of the Board of Selectmen. I'm your host, Linda Phillips. This series of show includes interviews with all of our selectmen as well as the town manager and any guests they invite to visit with us. I want to introduce you to the people who make Reading a better place to live by their selfless service to our community. Today we are here to chat with Selectman Daniel Ensminger and John Halsey. The topics we will be discussing have been chosen by each Selectman and the town manager. We have discussed economic development and town organization. In another segment, we discuss property, Proposition 2 and a half, property taxes, and residential town revenues and commercial tax rates. Public safety and affordable housing are another segment. Today, Mr. Ensminger and Mr. Halsey will share information about issues and matters they feel would be in, of interest to our community. The role of the Board of Selectmen in Reading, the Senior Aid Program, and again, property tax classification. We hope you'll find this information helpful and informative as we begin the budgeting process over the next few months. We would like to hear from you regarding these shows. At the end, there will be an email address for you to respond to with your comments or suggestions. The selectman and town manager would love to get feedback on future topics or any questions you might have. Only emails that are signed will be responded to. We look forward to hearing from you. Now let's begin by having each person introduce themselves. Welcome Mr. Ensminger, Dan, Thank and you, Mr. Linda. Halsey, John. I have a few introductory questions to help us move along. Uh, you can, uh, Dan, you can go first. How long have you lived in Reading? And you could tell us a little about your family. Sure, Linda. Thank you. Uh, I'm a 39-year resident uh, in Reading. Uh, my wife, Joan, formerly served as a teaching assistant at Birch Meadows School for many years. I have three sons, uh, Stephen, Michael, and uh, Mike, uh, Stephen, Mike, and Tom. Sorry about that. Uh, they're all married, uh, three grandchildren, uh, two are local, one is local, two, one and a half I should say, two are down in New Jersey. Uh, my boys all went to Reading Public Schools, played sports. Uh, I think my wife is the one who got me elected actually because uh, she knew more people than I did at the time. I, is that enough for now? And John, why okay. don't you tell us a little bit about <clears throat> well, yes, um we haven't lived here quite as long as Dan and his wife, but we have lived here for 28 years. We moved here um, when we were expecting our third child. Our oldest child at the time was in college out in California. And uh, we, we moved across country and picked Reading as the place that we wanted to live. Um, our other two children, um, our next daughter went to Reading High School, um, played basketball, ran track, Really had a great experience. Went on to Boston College, um, where she graduated top of her class at the Carroll School of Business, um, and she lives with her family in Hopkinton now. Um, our youngest, our son, um, you know, spent his entire school life here in Reading, and he's been—he's uh, actually the one that has made a decision to buy a house in Reading. So he's recently married and a new homeowner in Reading, and. We're expecting our next round of grandchildren uh, to be around the corner, which is going to be great. We have six grandchildren um, that range in age from nine to 22. Uh, three of the three oldest ones are in college, and the other three are enjoying themselves over in Hopkinton. Um, my wife has, you know, managed and maintained a property and casualty business here in town um, throughout the time that we've lived here. And I'm retired, um, sold my business in Boston, and um, kind of put my energies full time into Reading, um, although I've been very involved from a community standpoint from the time that we moved here. Um, but you get my kind of my full time attention um, since I retired six years ago. Dan, uh, why don't you share with us some of your commun community activities? You probably were a coach mm. or something. Sure. When your kids were there? Yep, yep. I did a fair amount of uh, youth uh, coaching, uh, mostly uh, running youth baseball, but nowhere near the level of Mr. Halsey here. Uh, 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 my wife and I were very active at St. Agnes Parish for a number of years, still are. Uh, I started out in town government back in 1981. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, how that came to be, but. Uh, 
uh, started out with the Industrial Development Commission. Uh, that's the group that was charged with uh, marketing our industrial land, although it was a committee of seven, six volunteers. We got the process moving on uh, defining what the landfill could be used for at the time, did some hydrogeological studies of it, um, found out that uh, there was no serious bad matter buried within that landfill, which was re refreshing. Uh, then I moved uh, after the charter was put in place, became a member of the Community Planning Development Commission. I was a charter member of that, chaired it for uh, two years, I believe. Ran for the Board of Selectmen in 1989 and uh, served for three years, uh, so I was sort of moving up the chain and uh, getting more interested in town government. Again, it was, I'm, I'm convinced my wife got me elected that, that first time I ran uh, town-wide. Uh, I took a 12 or 15-year hiatus uh, after 19... Uh, 89 and then came back to the board uh, in 2013. John, your, uh, your, your uh, reputation <laughs> <laughs> precedes you in the sports arena. <laughs> I, I've been very busy with um, youth-related sports, really from the time that we moved into town. Um, I would say that uh, my community activism um, was really tied to um, my children, and their involvement, you know, in a variety of different sports. Um, I'm proud to say that I was Reading's first t-ball coach, actually, mm -hmm. um, when that was started. Uh, my son, I believe, was five years old at that time. Um, ultimately, sp served 10 years on the board of Reading Youth Baseball, um, and then a and then moved over to Reading Babe Ruth, where I'm still a board member all these years later, um, and you know served as president for two years of Reading Babe Ruth League. And now kind of serve in the background for Jeff Pierce and all the great things that are going on at Reading Youth Baseball. I'm kind of proud to say that um, a lot of interested volunteers realized that about 15 years ago that some work needed to be done on the on the baseball field that the high school uses. And it was clear that even though there was going to be a lot of money that was going to be put into the, <clears throat> the school itself, um, there was really no money that was going to be put into e the, either the softball field or the baseball field where the high school teams play. Um, and so Reading Baseball Club was founded, um, myself and Rick Carter and you know a merry band of volunteers, which is really over the course of the last 15 years converted Morton Field, which is now Morton Field at Moscarella Ballpark, into the premier showcase, actually, of baseball stadiums in the Middlesex League. Um, Reading Baseball Club operated for about 10 years, folding into a joint partnership with Reading Babe Ruth, which is where I, you know, I just can't say enough about what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, you know, it's one of those, I've always believed that private partnership with municipal government was the best way to get things done. And, you know, honestly, sports throughout this, uh, this beautiful little town has proved that over and over again. Um, so my involvement was very intense there. Um, at a certain point, um, felt like it was time to offer my services to the town, which is what I, became, what I did as a, um, as a selectman now four plus years ago. Um, one of my enduring loves, however, is um, Boy Scouts. I've been very involved in Boy Scouts my entire life. I serve on the regional board of directors of the Northeast Region and on a national committee for the Boy Scouts in Dallas, as well as uh, having served as past president of the greater Boston area Boy Scouts. Um, these have all been joys of my life, actually. Um, and I can say that uh, I'm able to keep my hand in as the, um, as the founder and uh, and general manager of the Reading Bulldogs, which is a semi-professional team that is based out of uh, Reading and plays all over the greater suburban Boston area. So um, it's been a lot of fun. It's all been about Reading, the red and black. Dan, what was the compelling motivator mm -hmm. for seeking public service? Well, let me talk a little bit about my, uh, my background, where I came from. Uh, Actually, I'm a New York guy, but not from the city, from uh, the upstate area uh, around Niagara Falls. Uh, went to school at Rensselaer Polytechnic, got a degree in electrical engineering, two degrees. Uh, when I moved into doctoral studies, I uh, 
met an advisor who was very plugged into the Model Cities program. And I, I got very interested in the city of Cohoes, New York, worked there for a summer or two. Uh, and uh, I started to say, well, look, there's, there's some quantitative aspects of a city and growth that I could bring some of my training as an engineer to. So that got me into the game. I was really interested in uh, uh, applying uh, modeling and, and that sort of thing to, to uh, running towns and cities. Uh, we moved out here. I got a job with TASC uh, after we were expecting our first child. Uh, fi finished up the uh, PhD dissertation here. They were kind enough to type it for me, which was, uh, it was awesome. They had this new System 6 that it, it was a wizard. You didn't have to pay a typist anymore. You just this word processing system. It did integral signs and everything. Uh, who who who'd have thunk it? Uh, compared to what we have today, it was primitive. Uh, and uh, so that was back in 1976 when I started there. We moved to Reading in '78 and uh, got interested in Reading town government based on my prior knowledge and interests. And John, what was your compelling motivator for public service? Um, <clears throat> Probably was the only thing that you hadn't done in Reading. <laughs> well, I, I'd done a lot of things with a lot of different organizations, you know, from the high school all the way down to, you know, T-ball and, um, and Pop Warner football. But, you know, for me, um, my background really is, is in operations. Um, and finance. I have been involved in the financial world literally from the time I was in college. All of my career moves have been along those lines. And two of the businesses I've had um, developed really from scratch um, were based in the financial services world. And as I mentioned, operationally speaking, um, I'm kind of the guy behind the curtain. And one of the things I learned being involved with all the various private organizations that interacted with town um, was that, you know, maybe somebody with my skills would be valuable. Um, somebody who had a strong background in finance, had a strong background in operations, and could bring kind of private sector knowledge into partnership with um, what my town needed. And so, um, frankly, um, it seemed like the right time, um, having retired and able to commit lots of time and energy to the job for whatever time that I have it. Um, so proceeded with uh, the, elec the election process and took out my papers and uh, now have been elected twice um, on the Board of Selectmen. So um, my motivation really was <clears throat> to give something back. Um, I know one of the things, one of the principles you learn in scouting as a boy is that you know, whatever you take from the well, you've got to return. And so <clears throat> I felt that Reading had done a really spectacular job educating my children and providing a great place for them to grow up recreationally, healthy and having fun. And so it's, it was time to give back. And that's literally, I'm kind of in the middle of that process right now um, while I can still <clears throat> offer something. Uh, Dan, how you talked a little bit about your interest in town government became uh, from what you had learned in school and what you had applied in the real world. Yeah. How does your day job or your occupation give you a grounding for your nighttime job as a selectman? Well, my day job is uh, I'm, I'm semi-retired. I'm an IT consultant for various uh, homes, businesses. Uh, uh, I would say my daytime job gives me more time to do my nighttime <laughs> job right now, but I, it, it was kind of informed by my technical background. I've, I've tried to bring that to bear where I could uh, as a selectman. And John, the same thing? Well, um, my day job is to roam around and talk to people all day, and that's what I do. Um, and I do it, you know, in a variety of different ways. Um, my door is very open. Um, and so. I feel like that one of the things I'm able to do because I've, you know, accepted um, this challenge of becoming a selectman in retirement is that I, I do have the opportunity to hear kind of from every corner of, of the community, either officially or unofficially. Um, professionally speaking, as I mentioned, um, the fact that I'm kind of a business mechanic and, and, and a guy that really is comfortable around finance 
is becoming a more and more prominent um, attribute that's really necessary, frankly, um, in the job of selectmen, trying to understand how are we going to be able to have both operational and financial sustainability in our town is really important. That happens to be in my background and sweep spot. So. Yeah. And the last question, because I know you want to get onto your topic, mm -hmm. has your opinion of town government changed since working within it? Dan, we'll go back. Um, Reading has always been blessed with uh, volunteers and volunteerism. I've, I've seen that at church. I've seen it in the town. Uh, <laughs> they say it's the same 200 people that are active in all the groups. And that, to some degree, that's true. But uh, uh, New, Eng New England, having li lived elsewhere, uh, we have a great volunteer tradition in government here. Uh, the town meeting is a very unique creation. You don't see that nationwide. Uh, some towns, every voter can vote. In Reading, we have representative town meeting. You'll never be closer to your government than you are here. So that that has endured over the years I've been here. Uh, and Reading has very strong institutions and uh, good government in general. Uh, what I have uh, regretted seeing over the years is I think a bit of a drop in uh, the degree of volunteerism. And I don't know what that's due to. Could be more people working, uh, you know, uh, two, two, two earning parents out there, less volunteer time when, when people are in their younger years. Uh, but we're still getting volunteers to step up. So I, I think it stayed the same, <coughs> but uh, I, I wish we could get more volunteers for certain things. And John, the same question. Has your opinion of town government changed since you began working within it? Well, <clears throat> one thing that was not surprising is the pace uh, of government. And I will say that um, it, it almost is stunning to me um, sometimes how deliberate we must be um, to satisfy the sustainability needs that we have. And I think part of it's what Dan brought up, frankly, that um, we've got a unique form of government. Um, mm. Everybody really has the opportunity for a say. Um, every neighborhood can elect somebody to have a voice and those voices really at town meeting are the voices that you know control the purse strings and control the pace um, and so <clears throat> I will say that um, the pace having grown up in the business world is, has been a little challenging for me but you know on the positive side and I think this is a huge positive Dan touched on it and that is that I never realized how much we get done with really pretty limited resources. When you stop to think about um, how we're able to bring the resources of both revenue and personnel and, and what we're able to accomplish with limits to both of them is actually quite stunning. Um, and I think part of that is tied to the volunteerism that Dan talked about. We could always use more volunteers, and that has seemed to slow a little bit um, lately. We'd love to see more of that. Um, the other thing that we're seeing more of uh, that causes, I think, our town to be able to really deliver a lot with a little um, is the fact that we've got um, a lot of private organizations that are happy to partner um, yep. With, with the town. And we see that, for example, I mentioned to you down on the baseball field. Um, we see it in creative arts. Um, that's emerging now. Um, we see it, we're blessed to have Reading Rotary Club who stepped up to help to preserve and enrich, you know, our Fall Street Fair, which was a really kind of a, you know, a private enterprise that stepped up with public guidance um, and help to turn out the best event ever. So. I guess what I'm, the thing that I'm most pleased with and happiest about is what we're able to accomplish for our citizens. I think as a citizen before I was involved in elected government, I probably didn't appreciate it as much as I do today. Well, now comes the moment that you've been waiting for. <laughs> uh, you, we can have the, you can have the uh, floor to talk about the powers and duties of the selectmen, and one subject's mm. going to go right into the next. So I'll leave it to you, Dan. All right. Thanks very much. I want to th thank you again, and thanks to RCTV for making this forum possible. Uh, and I hope it's helpful to the folks out there. Uh, first of all, who are we? Who is the Board of Selectmen, also known uh, in other towns as uh, the Select Board? We are five uh, 
officials elected to unpaid three-year terms. They're, the elections are staggered, so two terms are up in year one, two t terms are up in year two, and the third uh, cycle is the last seat. Uh, so there's one person up for election next April, for example. Uh, so we don't all disappear at once, although some would wish that would happen sometimes. <laughs> Uh, we serve as the town's chief executive officer, the five of us. Uh, we do hire uh, a paid town manager, as many of you know. Uh, here's an interesting statement. We're responsible for the health, welfare, and safety of all Reading residents. And that's really true if you think about it, because although we're, in the next uh, bullet, policy setters, uh, we're responsible for hiring the guy at the top uh, and making sure that uh, we set policies uh, to strengthen our public safety people, our public works people, and people delivering services to the elderly uh, through our policies and the people that we hire, who they hire. Uh, so we, we try to do that in a fair way. We're looking out for all of Reading. Uh, the services that we touch, touch every single person in this town and are very important. Uh, so, as I said, we, we appoint the people who do the work. We, we try to work hard at the policy setting role, but we, we're not there in town hall carrying out the role of the uh, town manager, who's actually our chief operating officer, uh, Bob Leleshire, who's, in my opinion, doing a great job for this town. Uh, and we're also responsible for convening and working with the town meeting. We're the ones, in general, that call town meeting together through uh, voting on election warrants. And as we spoke about earlier, that, that is the town's legislative body, representative of every uh, precinct in this town. Dan, wouldn't you say it's kind of important, too, to probably note here that uh, town meeting really is the purse strings? Yes. So, you know, effectively speaking, um, we're policy setters. We're looking to hire the chief operating officer, as you point out, Bob Leilashura. And mm -hmm. uh, I can't say enough about what he's able to accomplish how he's got his, literally his fingers on every facet of town government. And, you know, as we set the pace for town meeting, put the warrants together, we rely so heavily on, on his ability to be able to let us not miss anything. And his ability to communicate um, the very complex budgets, ultimately it's his job to deliver his budget, which is really the whole town's budget, to the body that releases the money. So, you know, that's true. it's and a I, very interesting collaboration that goes on. I must say, our, our town meeting is, uh, uh, sorry, Linda, no, I need no. to butt in. Uh, our, uh, they ask a lot of good <clears throat> questions. Uh, I've, been, I've sat through other towns, town meetings where, you know, they have a one-page school budget and it passes without a peep or a question, and I'm like sitting there scratching my head. Uh, boy, that would never fly in Reading. Uh, but our, our folks do their homework. They clearly read the warrant reports. They always ask good questions. Uh, they sometimes put us on the spot right up there in front of the 192. That's, that's their job to do and our job to respond. Okay. Shall we move on to powers and duties? Uh, this is the first time I think we've ever written down in one place all the things the selectmen actually do. And I may have forgotten a few things. But uh, let's start out with the powers. Uh, Someone will remind us, I'm by the sure way. We'll they will. get a comment we, on And I think I know help. one individual that will not let us forget if we so leave anything nothing out. Nothing will be left. Or misstate something. Uh, many of these powers are elucidated in state law, but many of them uh, are also uh, elucidated in our town charter, our home rule charter that was passed back in 1986. We appoint, manage, and can dismiss the town manager. We've only had two in the whole history of uh, the Reading Charter since 1986. Pete Heckenbleckner, and uh, our current town manager, Bob LeLeshure. Uh, we do conduct an annual review publicly of the town manager. We just did that for fiscal year <coughs> 17. Uh, the second one is interesting and has a history. Uh, when the framers of the charter uh, looked at how to separate powers and have checks and balances, they deemed it important for two key positions to be hired by the board and not by the town manager, and that is the position of town council in the position of town accountant. Why those two positions? Well, town council is a, a position that uh, he renders legal advice to the town. Uh, I've seen other instances and other situations and other boards where a manager has actually usurped the town, the uh, council, kind of turned turn that person into a weapon against 
people and causes he didn't want. So that power is checked for the town manager. It's given to the board of selectmen to, to hire that particular entity. Town council does work closely with the town manager, nonetheless, and uh, requests for his services are available to boards, but they must go through the town manager since he does bill by the minute. <laughs> And our town accountant is up for the same, much the same rationale. You want a check and balance in a financial sense on the, uh, the rest of the financial staff, which reports to the town manager. And so that person is hired by us also. Okay. Uh, we uh, serve as police, fire, park, highway, water and sewer commissioners. That's a mouthful. But directly or indirectly, uh, we're policy setters. Uh, we, uh, in fact, do have to approve any pro projected hires for police chief and fire chief. Uh, Bob cannot just go out and hire who he wants. He has to bring that to us. We don't get involved directly in that process, although we do sit on uh, screening committees many times for those two key positions. Uh, park, highway, water, and sewer. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the park? Yeah, part? well, I, <clears throat> yeah. I do think it's kind of important to recognize that those people that you know are in our viewing audience today may well watch us on Tuesday nights and they may figure we come down on Tuesday nights and you know there's something in front of us and um, <clears throat> we opine and we decide but a lot more goes into it and this is really one of the places that that, that happens the title of commissioner in all those various areas makes for more field trips than you could yeah. possibly imagine True. Um, whether it's you know to visit a site to visit a project um, the parks, for example, um, parks and recreation. The recreation committee is an advisory committee um, to the board of selectmen, and it does a lot of. It, it's able to accomplish a lot of things and keep us informed. But, for example, recently uh, within the last year, it was time for them to reset fees. Well, that's something that has to get in front of the you know the park commissioners when all said and done. Um, so these are the kinds of things that people probably don't think of when they think of, um, they, they don't think of these hats that we wear um, and, you know, what we do in the way of field work and, um, and, and, you know, the parks, for example, are everywhere you turn around. You know, you could be at Simon's Way, you can, um, you can be at Birch Meadow, you can be at Washington Park, I mean, the list goes on and on. So there's a lot going on there and a lot of activity. And although we don't, again, try to have our hands on the wheel of right. everything, we're ultimately responsible for how it works at the other end. And one example, being a highway commissioner, I, I, uh, we hold office hour, well, it's a half hour before some of our meetings we take turns staffing it. Came to my office half hour and found the room filled with Oak Street residents uh, earlier this year. Uh, they were concerned at, at some of the improvements happening and the coordination between the MWRA <coughs> and, and our town engineer. So they brought those concerns directly to the board. Uh, we exercised some oversight, asked, asked a few questions, made some inquiries, and helped that process get smoothed out just a bit. Uh, actually got a compliment from, from one of the, the residents afterwards, which uh, we, we always appreciate but seldom get. <laughs> it's okay. That's part of the job. Uh, Water and sewer is pretty self-explanatory. We do set the water and sewer rates every year. Uh, we try to build in a healthy reserve for emergencies. Uh, these are what's called enterprise accounts. They operate outside the limits of Proposition 2.5 uh, because we do have to raise the funds necessary to keep these, these services working. Uh, we work with the MWRA. We owe certain assessments to them but we also maintain our own capital plant in Reading, and we are very uh, pleased at the degree to which we've been able to keep, renew our systems, basically. You've seen a lot of street work going on. Well, part of the reason your street's not paved as soon as you want is we want to make sure all the, the piping is uh, replaced or lined or whatever we have to do to it on the schedule that's been set forward before we, uh, we pave your street over and have to dig it up again. Um, our infrastructure uh, has actually been cited by many surrounding towns as being in excellent condition uh, compared to what they have. So uh, sh everybody should feel good about that. Okay, next point. Um, many of you know that we, uh, we have a number of volunteer boards, committees, and commissions. It's over two dozen in number. Some of the more important ones are Community Planning and Development Commission, 
who issue site plan uh, reviews to downtown developments. Uh, they, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, which adjudicates requests for special permits and variances from both businesses and residents. Uh, let's see, the Recreation Committee, John alluded to, uh, worked uh, directly with the folks in setting up programs, uh, and they, they can initiate uh, requests for fees. They're doing master planning of the whole Birch Meadow area, and I think we'll probably have a chance to talk about that a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, serve as liaison. Uh, we have liaison assignments to uh, the boards. We split them up among the five members. Uh, I'm a liaison to the Board of Health right now and to the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department and a couple of others. So I know you're going to ask me if I don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, yeah, we, I think we each have, yeah. um, uh, not to cut in too much, Dan, but no, you're, I, I want to say that there's, I think we each have at least six assignments, six or seven assignments, given the amount of yeah. boards, commissions, and committees. Um, you can imagine, um, you see us on Tuesday night uh, doing our Board of Selectmen thing, um, but then, you know, a big part of what we do is try to work closely, sometimes in person, yep. sometimes by email, sometimes through the good graces, frankly, of um, RCTV. Um, so uh, conservation is one of the committees that um, the Conservation Commission actually is, you know, I'm liaison to. Um, given the amount of evenings out and the conflicts, sometimes you don't get there. Right. Beauty of RCTV is I can watch the whole Conservation Commission meeting and I can do that usually within 24 hours and bring back a report. It may prompt a question for me to be in touch with the, uh, with the chair or some other member of the commission. So the technology is really starting to assist us in a, in a very positive way. Um, I'm, you know, also involved with public safety, so I'm the liaison to both the police chief and the fire chief. Um, this week, well, let's see, what day is today? Tuesday? Tuesday. Uh, yeah. yeah. Today, I actually ran into the fire chief, and we got to spend some time together. Last week, I was with the, with the police chief. Um, <clears throat> we need to be able to make the rounds as, as often as we're able. I'm very actively involved, as it'll be no surprise to anybody, with the Recreation Committee and have been the liaison there for quite some time, actually. So, you know, all of these committees, really, the people I serve with on the Board of Selectmen need to hear about my six, I need to hear about the six mm -hmm. that Dan's doing and so forth. So that's a function of what we actually do um, at the beginning of every meeting is kind of fill each other in on what's going on. Probably the one that I'm most connected to from the standpoint of my time and energy um, is ARCASA, um, the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. I would argue probably at this moment in time it may be the single most important committee in town. Um, the opiate crisis, um, the battle against the disease, not against the people um, who are suffering from it is, is very high on our list. It's a really important thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And the selectmen have been extremely supportive, both in the suggestion of appropriating money and the support um, of their activities. Um, and we urge people to take advantage of the fact that we have a pioneer organization in our CASA, you know, in the battle against substance abuse. And it's really important, obviously, for our children, but what we're finding is that it's an important piece of what we offer to people of all ages um, in our town, services. And this is what our one of the things our CASA Maybe does. Maybe we could invite them to come. I think that would be an exceptionally yeah. good idea. We, the as aware, we, as yeah. we've mm -hmm. done this, just our conversation has mm -hmm. led to other things. I know the town manager wants to has uh, wants to invite some guests and, and we can get into some of these well, things. Well, you know, since, way. you know, and I, you know, you've put together this I, this concept of, you know, the selectmen and friends, I guess. Um, and, you know, certainly our CASA is somebody that I would love to bring mm -hmm. in for the awareness. Um, they've, so they've sponsored some really special <clears throat> opportunities in the community, which unfortunately in the busy lives that people have, maybe it's a problem of um, publication and awareness, maybe it's mm -hmm. a problem of not enough time, but again, I come back to RCTV, There's, uh, there are two 
very important uh, our CASA programs um, that are available now through their website by the graces of uh, RCTV. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll hear more about that. I do think that that yeah. could make for another program, to be yeah. honest with you, Linda. Just tying into some of your comments about keeping up with the, you know, the events that these boards are doing. In addition to RCTV, and, and thanks guys, you do a great job with those videos. Uh, our town clerk, who I think is second to none, uh, has created a microfiche library online, which is downloadable into PDFs of uh, board commission and committee minutes that literally go back decades. I saw that. You, you I can, saw that. You can search by topic. <laughs> uh, so it's very, it makes it very easy to research the history of issues. Uh, hats off to Laura. I've worked with other town clerks in, in certain endeavors I've, I've worked on, and I've never found one uh, that gets the job done the way she does. Hats off to her and her staff. I think part yeah. of what makes Reading unique is the unique people we have. Yes. Who our, work here and Our town employees are quite diligent, uh, very committed, and, and it, it just excellent uh, to work with. Okay, another power. Uh, we serve on uh, special appointment committees. Uh, if there are vacancies on our sister boards, uh, two that come to mind most frequently are school committee and library board of trustees. Uh, essentially, and I think we're responsible for RMLD also if there's a vacancy. Uh, oh, we participate. We, are. we yeah. participate. The, the idea is that this, the current board of selectmen sits with the remaining members of that committee that has the vacancy, and we vote as a committee of the whole. It's generally 10 people if it's a five-person board. It's a little more with the school committee, and six votes are needed among the assembled group to, to appoint. And that appointment is uh, valid until the next town election. So we've had to do that several times for these We're boards. in the middle of one of those right we now, are. Dan. We are, Gary and I. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's December yeah. 18th, That's if correct. memory serves me. Yep. Um, we'll be joining the school committee at their regular meeting. Yes. Um, and we'll be uh, empowered as you know the, the, the Board of Selectmen and the school committee to interview and choose um, a person to fill a vacancy. Um, long time public servant in the school system, yep. um, in youth sports, and as an elected official, Gary Nyan uh, needed to step away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's got some, he's got a, a bit of a health challenge that he's sure. going to be up to and is going to be, and is in the middle of dealing with and needed to really step away. Um, we regret that loss to the town of his, of what he was able to do, but there's a system for that. And the system is that uh, we join with the school committee and we'll be replacing, we'll be filling his seat before year end. Until the voters have a chance to speak. Yes. Right. Okay, we also uh, close warrants for the town meetings in all elections. If, uh, if we forget to close the warrant for the presidential election, guess what, folks, there's no election. That's never happened in the history of the board, I don't think. But uh, we are actually responsible under the law for uh, voting that election into existence. Uh, and a uh, very important point on the last power, we have the sole power of any uh, entity in town to place a Proposition 2.5 override, that's to increase the amount of taxes that can be raised. We can also vote an underride, which is to decrease the levy limit that the town uh, can use, and some towns actually do do that. Uh, the other thing we can vote on is to authorize a debt exclusion election, uh, for instance, a Debt exclusion for a large building, a, the high school, for example, the library, uh, we're all done outside the, uh, the levy limit by debt exclusions. So, In other words, when those are paid for, the taxes for those will go away. That's correct. Those Very are, different those, from two and a half. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The two and a half uh, override uh, persists permanently. Yeah. Yeah. When you override. Until you underwrite. <laughs> well, and, you know, that's actually, that happens in... Mm -hmm. it, not a lot of communities, but no. there are clearly communities. Uh, I know the one where my daughter um, and, her, and her husband live in have had two in recent memory. Mm -hmm. um, so it happens for sure. And those go to the voters as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, more powers and duties of a financial nature next. Uh, we uh, review the uh, department and town manager budgets. We're about to embark on that task for uh, fiscal year 19. Uh, Bob first, uh, Bob Lalisher, our town manager, first requests the departments to prepare budgets, does an initial uh, review of them, 
many times he'll share those raw budgets with us and we'll work together to, to craft them into one overall town budget. We do not have direct power to do a budget, unlike the school committee who own their budget. Under the charter, it's the town manager that owns the budget, both on the town side and overall. He is responsible for presenting a, a balanced budget to town meeting. We also conduct uh, an annual hearing on property tax classification, that is the share of the taxes that are going to be paid by the residents uh, by setting the tax rate either equal for everybody or setting a different tax rate for commercial and, and a separate one for residential. We'll talk a little more about that later. Uh, our newest power is uh, to set the senior relief uh, annually. That's uh, relates to the Massachusetts circuit breaker relief that people may be getting, and we're going to be talking about that some more too. Yeah, that's uh, actually very interestingly. We will talk more yeah. in more depth because it's something people want to know about. Right. <clears throat> I think it is important to know. Dan mentioned this is a new power, um, and it's new because, frankly, we solicited. Um, you know, a, a, through the through the House and the Senate, mm -hmm. a, a home rule petition um, that actually created a special law just for Reading. Just for Reading, yeah. And yeah. relative <clears throat> to this, we're one of three communities in the state that have done that. Yep. And we're going to talk a little more about in depth about that in, in just a minute. Okay, uh, last two financial items. We approve all uh, town borrowing. We sign the bonds. I remember there's a stack like that sitting next to us after our meetings the night we do that. So we, we never get writer's cramp. We always sign those. And uh, we are empowered to accept gifts to the town. Sometimes town meeting also needs to ratify the, the acceptance of gifts. And uh, under approvals, we... Uh, I think, excuse yes, me. Yes, sure think thing. The, yeah. I think the gifts is the only thing there is never a debate about. <laughs> well, <laughs> You'd be surprised. Really? Uh, oh, okay. if, if someone's gifting a uh, physical something to the town, like a swimming pool, they will require maintenance eventually, so it's important to ask the right questions before looking the gift horse yeah, in the mouth, yeah. I guess. But generally <clears throat> speaking, yes, it is an easy You'd call. be surprised yeah. at the discussion. I think that's <laughs> fair to say that. I probably uh, would. Well, actually, no, not much surprises me we, now. We, we don't want a white elephant, yeah. <laughs> the last thing we need. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, the town or the uh, Back to approvals. The police and fire chief appointments I mentioned previously uh, do need to be ratified by uh, the board, the ones that the town manager proposes. Uh, we, uh, Bob prepares an org chart for the town, which is revised from time to time. We just changed the, uh, took apart the uh, combined role of the treasurer collector as one example, and we have separate people doing those two functions right now. Uh, and we, we will approve that organizational structure when all said and done. Uh, we approve the traffic rules and regulations. That includes fines, I believe. We approve general usage and fees for the town parks and recreational facilities. Spoke a little about that earlier. And uh, we approve the uh, union and non-union classification plans. That's the defining the different uh, levels from manager down down to labor, there's usually uh, you know a dozen or so of those levels with different steps within them uh, for the union negotiations. And finally, our own policies. We're taking a look at those actually in the upcoming weeks and, and meetings. Uh, yeah, that's actually very important to you know that yeah. you know the viewers would understand that there are policies. They are not laws. They're policies. Right. Um, what, hap what, has, what has happened, frankly, is many of these haven't been updated in decades. And so, you know, as soon as we have the budget process out of the way, kind of the, one of the next important things for us to do is visit all of the uh, Board of Selectmen policies right. and bring them more in keeping with <clears throat> the way we actually conduct ourselves and the way the business of the town is conducted. One of those policies, John, uh, is the uh, policy for the election of the chair of the board. Uh, the actual policy wording suggests uh, as a guideline that the person, a person serving in the last year of their term potentially seeking re-election should not serve as chair. But that goes back to some other wording in the policy that says we reorganize in June. So if you think about it, uh, a chair would serve from June to June. Our elections are in April. Uh, a person elected who is seeking chair who is seeking election could actually be voted out of office 
at a time when the board wasn't planning to reorganize. But in practice, we've been reorganizing after the April election, so that, that is less of a concern now since we, uh, we are prepared to... to well, as we point out, you know, policies well, we're gonna are, look at that. Policies, you know, were put in place in some cases over two decades ago. Reality right. is that there's been a, you know, a certain actual behavior of the boards that predates you and I, actually. Yes, it um, does. And, and so, you know, it's time I, to... I think it, the school committee does... Well, the school committee does it... They, they're June, June to June. June. They, yeah, yeah. They do the it's time. Yeah, yeah, it is time. Pros and cons. To, we're we're going to talk yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah. we're going to talk what, what about makes it. Makes the most sense. Clean them up. Yep. So, great. Okay, moving on to licenses. Uh, the most common license uh, folks probably hear us talking about are liquor licenses. Uh, we approve annual licenses, licenses for restaurants, package stores, and, and other facilities. Uh, one day liquor licenses actually are granted by the town manager. We've delegated that power to him. But there's a you know a party or some gathering that wants a one-day license. You just see Bob about it. That doesn't have to go to nighttime government. <coughs> uh, we have a big move on to get uh, per permitting out of the hands of nighttime government when possible. Put it on daytime government when, and, and, and streamline the red tape people have to go through with appropriate checks and balances, as always. Uh, in the way of uh, liquor license uh, management, we approve annual license renewals I think are coming up at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, transfers of license, changes of owner or manager, we want to make sure that uh, people are properly vetted uh, by the police before uh, we approve such a change. We also approve peddler entertainment. I don't think we've entered, uh, there's not been too many jukebox permits coming before us. Uh, that, that's a less common one. Common victualler, i.e. restaurant uh, permits to serve food. And class one, two, and three vehicle licenses generally used car lots uh, and new car lots. New car, used yep. car, and actually one of those is for junkyards, junkyards which we that's actually right. don't that's have. Class so. three, I think. Thanks. Um, Kino licenses were actually forbidden in general, except for Kino to go by a previous board of selectmen. Uh, this board has resurrected the uh, ability of uh, our convenience stores, restaurants to apply for these. And the way that it will now work is uh, the approval request goes, I think, directly to the state, John. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. We can say no if we think there's a, a some, some mitigating circumstance that just makes this facility not right. Not in the best interest of the town exactly. for some reason. But in general, they will be approved by default now. Uh, we don't have an overwhelming number of full Kino licenses. I think it's only three. And it's, uh, it's something we're doing, I think, to help our, bi our small businessmen out uh, they've lost some business, uh, you know, through the rightful actions of other boards, uh, you know, to prohibit certain items from getting into the hands of our kids. But uh, they need they need another uh, revenue source, and this is helping them. Uh, the last one, I don't remember ever approving one, but we we are supposed to pass approvals of commercial underground storage tanks. That's fairly rare. Waivers. We get a lot of these. Uh, early opening hours uh, for businesses, typically uh, folks that sell coffee in the morning or exercise places, uh, Tread LLC uh, is one that came before us recently. A lot of folks uh, want to hop on those bikes and, and get some uh, good exercise before they jump on the train <laughs> in the morning. So uh, I get Not my exercise me. at other hours, but uh, they, we, we have allowed opening as early as 5 a.m. for those businesses. Haven't had a lot of late closing time requests. That would be no. uh, more unusual. Uh, we also get a lot of, uh, not a lot, but uh, requests for driveway configuration approvals. We have traffic rules and regs that regulate uh, how far apart driveway openings can be. This is usually dealt with by staff, and in general, we agree with what the staff decides. Staff will bring us, um, they, they meet uh, twice, a, twice a month, every other week, actually. Yep. Um, there's a long acronym which all government you know bodies seem to adopt that um, something like a really parking, tied parking transportation task force yeah um, it sounds like the um, the key to that is that they will you know we're gonna hear we hear from public safety we hear from DPW yep. um, and we hear from planning um, and they give us guidance and you know we tend to want to work as closely and as favorably as we can with residents as long as we don't impair the roadways and we don't impair public safety so occasionally uh, they, they agree with the request but 
they're, they're hamstrung by the way the rules and regs are written. And so they come to us, the uh, parking yeah. task force, and ask for a waiver. More rarely, uh, they, they've been a little unfair to the people in our view, and we, we can override their decision. But that, that's very seldom. Yep. And this last one is interesting. We're supposed to perambulate the town boundaries. I like that word. Perambulate. It's a, I wouldn't have known about this except Bill Brown pointed it out. Uh, that is, a, a, verify that the boundary points of the town of Reading uh, versus uh, you know, Wakefield, Stoneham, Wilmington, North Reading, et cetera, are correctly noted. And I think this probably goes back to the days when uh, meets and bounds were indicated by piles of rock and lines of rail. and natural phenomenon that could shift around. Uh, so the selectmen were marched out there to, yep, make sure that this rock pile is where it should be. Today we have USGS markers probably marking those spots so they don't move a whole lot. I have not once perambulated, but I'm willing to do it. We're supposed to do it every <laughs> five years. <laughs> okay. Anything else you need from us, Linda? No, I think, well, that was the subjects that you wanted to discuss. Yep. And and uh, I just want to take this time and thank you again for spending your sure. time to, to prepare this information and for all that you do to make Reading a, a wonderful community to live and raise a family and uh, enjoy the kind of relationships we have here in town. And age in place, if that's your and desire. And age in place, yeah. <laughs> amen to that. So we'd like to say, uh, we said hello Reading at the beginning of the show. We'll say goodbye Reading till the next time we see you in another a segment of this series of Hello Reading and Selectmen and Friends. We'd like to thank you for watching and don't forget our, our email address will be posted. If you'd like to make any comments or have any questions, the Selectmen and Town Manager would be happy to answer, answer you and we look forward to your ideas for our next segments. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>